Hey folks, so today we're going to be covering installation, the necessary step before all of the fun animation stuff can start. We provide a few different installation options. This isn't because it's complicated to install GSAP, it's just because there are a bunch of different tools and frameworks out there that all have different requirements. We split this video up into chapters, so if you know what you're looking for, like NPM for example, just jump right ahead to that spot. If you're not sure how to get started, just stick with me and we'll run through it all together. Oh, and if you're here because you're running into build errors or something isn't working, don't you worry, we've got your back. If this video doesn't help, just pop over to the forums and we'll give you a hand over there. So before we get started, it's important to note that GSAP's comprised of a bunch of different files. We can see how it's split up by looking at the overview on the main docs page. So this section here is the core GSAP library. For most people, this is the only file that they'll ever need. It contains everything that you need to make performant browser-friendly animation. Then we've got some plugins and easers that allow you to add extra functionality, stuff like controlling animations with scroll, dragging, text animation, or maybe even morphing SVG paths. We even have a React package, which I'll cover in a bit. Are you gonna help us, bub? That's nice. Cool, so first up, let's take a little look at the zip download on the install page. So if you go to our install page and you click on the big get GSAP button, you'll get a zip file with a bunch of folders in it. So the number of files here can be a little bit confusing at first glance, but don't worry, you don't need to dig through all of them to install GSAP. Basically, there are lots of different tools and ways to build websites. So we've given you all different flavors of JavaScript so everyone's got what they need. Each of these folders contain the main GSAP file and then the plugin files. The minified files here are what you need if you're self-hosting the files and using a script tag. So there's no need for build tooling, just pop it into a script tag and you're good to go. You'll see in the minified folder, you have min.js files and .map files. The min.js files are the ones that you'll include in your project. The map files are called source maps. They connect minified files to the original authored versions, but you can totally ignore them if you want. They're just there in case people need them for debugging. The ESM folder is the same stuff, GSAP file and plugins, but these are ES module files. They're transpiled down to be compatible with modern build tools. The UMD folder is the same stuff again, but in UMD format. So generally these are used for debugging because they're not minified, so they're human readable. Basically different folders, different formats, but at the end of the day, it's all just JavaScript. Now that you've got an overview of the zip file, let's use the minified GSAP library file to install GSAP in a simple little web page with a script tag. Script tags are probably the easiest way to get set up with GSAP. In fact, probably the easiest way to add JavaScript to a web page in general. Doesn't require any build tooling, just pop in a script tag and you're good to go. If you're building out a simple web page without frameworks or build processes and you're not sure how to get GSAP in there, the likelihood is that script tags is what you're after. For demo purposes today, here's a super simple little starting point. Here's our website folder. In our HTML file, we've got a little box element that we're gonna spin around. So let's add some JavaScript. There's a couple of ways to include JavaScript in a script tag. We can pop it directly into a web page by adding it inside a script element like this, or we can reference an external file. So this is the same JavaScript, just two different ways to include it. To animate this little box with GSAP, we need to include the GSAP library, and then we also need to write some of our own JavaScript in the form of GSAP code to animate the box. So first, let's get the GSAP library from the zip folder that we downloaded from the install page. So we want the minified file, so we're gonna grab gsap.min.js from the minified folder. And then let's pop this file into our website folder. If we open this file in our text editor, you can see all of the JavaScript that makes up the core GSAP library. So now we're gonna reference this file with a script tag. We're gonna pop this script tag at the end of the body before the closing body tag. And then we're gonna add a path to the file in the source attribute. Perfect, so now we've got GSAP included, we can write some of our own GSAP code. So let's make a new script tag. We're gonna write our code in here for demo purposes, but you can write your code in your own JavaScript file if you want. And if we refresh this page, animation, hooray. When we animate, it's really important to make sure that the elements that we're trying to animate and the external JavaScript that we're using are available to us. So we've popped our GSAP file at the end of the body and our GSAP code after the GSAP file for that reason. So our web page and all of our elements or DOM loads and then our external JavaScript and then our GSAP code. But to be on the safe side, let's add our GSAP code inside a DOM content loaded event. So now this code is only gonna run after our HTML document's been completely passed by the browser. 
This is super helpful if you're using a UI-based website builder like Webflow or Wix. You might not have control over where your code goes. You'll probably just have a JavaScript panel in a GUI somewhere to add your custom code into. If you use DOM content loaded, you can be sure that no matter where the tool puts your JavaScript, it always waits until your elements are there and ready to be animated before it runs the GSAP code. If you're using a modern framework like React or Vue, or maybe you have some sort of bundling setup like Webpack or Parcel, you'll likely be reaching for a package manager to install your JavaScript. If we pop over to the install helper, you can see that there's a tab for NPM and a tab here for Yarn. They're basically exactly the same. For NPM, we do NPM install GSAP, Yarn is Yarn add GSAP. So let's take a look at how to install GSAP with NPM over in this little project. So we're just using vanilla JS here with a really simple parcel bundling setup. We're going to copy the npm command from the install helper. And then if we paste this into our terminal, we can see that npm's doing stuff. And, and then gsap's been added to our dependencies. Awesome. So if we poke into our node modules folder, we can see GSAP and all of the plugin files have been added. So we've got GSAP here, and then we've got scroll trigger and some of the other plugins. So we've got the GSAP files, and then over here in our JavaScript file, we've got a little GSAP tween setup. But nothing's happening yet because we haven't imported GSAP. So let's import. If we go back to the install helper and we scroll down, we can see our import snippets here. So this is importing the ES module file. ES modules are pretty standard, um, but occasionally some frameworks will use UMD files. So we have an option here to import the UMD files from the disk directory instead. If you're not sure which to use, just check the docs for the framework that you're using, but it's most likely to be the ESM imports. So let's copy this and then we'll go back to our project. We're gonna import the core GSAP file from the GSAP package and save. And then hooray, there we go, animation. So let's install one of the plugins. We already saw that the plugins are just chilling in our node modules folder waiting for us. So all we have to do is import one. So let's pop back to our install helper. We're gonna get the correct syntax and we're gonna click on scroll trigger and grab this. So you can see that this has added another import line and then also a line here to register the plugin with the core GSAP library. This makes sure our plugins and the core work nicely together and it prevents any tree shaking issues. So let's copy this into our project and let's use the plugin. So we'll add a scroll trigger onto our box tween here and then we'll add some height on the body to scroll into. And then if we refresh, we've got a lovely scroll animation, nice. So a little tip, if we're using a lot of plugins, we might end up with lots of lines of imports. So optionally, you can also import GSAP and all of your plugins from GSAP slash all to keep things a little tidy. There are lots of different ways to use WordPress, but one of the most common ways to include GSAP in WordPress is to enqueue your scripts in a functions.php file. So here we're just adding the main GSAP library. If you're including plugins too, you'll need to add the plugin and then pass the main GSAP file as a dependency. Then finally, we're gonna enqueue a file that contains our custom GSAP code. So this is the code that we've written. This also needs to be passed the main GSAP file as a dependency. So this is quite a big snippet, but don't worry about trying to pause the video and copy it down. If you head over to gsap.com forward slash WordPress, you'll find this snippet and then some other helpful resources. Bear in mind that if you're using a premium theme or something off the shelf like Divi, it's not advised to edit the functions.php file. When the theme updates, it'll get overwritten and you'll lose all of your changes. So you'll either need to create a child theme or potentially if your theme allows for it, you might be able to upload some JavaScript or custom code in the theme settings. Just check in with the theme developer or the documentation. If you're using React, we have a special hook just for you. I won't go into it in detail here because I made a whole other video for that, which I'll link to below. But TLDR, it handles animation cleanup for you. You just drop your GSAP animations into the hook and you're good to go. So to get it installed, you can add the use GSAP hook into the selected options in the install helper. So scroll down in the NPM tab and you'll see use GSAP. If we select this, you'll see that we've now got install commands for the GSAP library and the React package. And then down here, we've got an import for use GSAP too. So make sure to register use GSAP just like you would do with your plugins. Here's a little stack blitz example. So this is installing the GSAP package and then it's installing use GSAP 
and then registering the plugin. And then this is using the hook down here. If you want to know any more about the hook, make sure to check out the official video and check out the docs as well. I really hope this video has been helpful for you and that you found that little bit of information that you are after. If you're still stuck, please don't struggle on your own. We're here for you, no judgment at all. Just pop into our forums and we'll give you a hand. That's all I've got for now. So until next time, folks, have fun and happy tweening. <laughs>